Propaganda attempts to influence the hearts and minds of its audience, as we have seen in previous episodes. However, another goal of wartime propaganda was to motivate people to action, to convince them to cooperate with such government programs as the draft and rationing, but also to urge individuals to actively participate in the war effort. This participation could take various forms, including enlistment in the armed forces, working in a war essential job, buying war bonds, collecting scrap paper and metal, contributing money and time to the Red Cross and other service organizations, planting victory gardens, participating in civil defense, and taking part in other home front activities. The goal was to have everyone involved in a total war effort. Because comic books were aimed largely at a youthful audience, comic book covers did not address all home front activities in the same detail. This was not unusual. Other media also targeted certain groups, such as factory workers, housewives, farmers, even servicemen. The major home front themes featured on wartime comic book covers were those most appropriate for and accessible to youthful readers. Consequently, comic covers prominently promoted the purchase of war bonds and stamps and the collection of scrap material that could be recycled for the war effort. One of the government's major programs during World War II was the promotion and sale of war bonds and stamps. Originally introduced as defense savings bonds and stamps in the pre-Pearl Harbor period, after America entered the conflict, the sales of bonds became one of the chief ways the United States financed the war effort. War bonds could be purchased in denominations of 25, 50, 100, 500, or $1,000. For the less affluent, including children, war saving stamps were available for as little as 10 cents up to $5. When enough stamps were accumulated, they could be exchanged for an actual war bond. The United States Treasury Department spared no effort in urging Americans to purchase bonds and stamps, utilizing the print media, radio, and motion pictures, as well as personal appearances by government officials and celebrities such as movie stars, athletes, and war heroes. The tall man with the high hat will be coming down your way. Get your savings out when you hear him shout, and he bonds today. Come on and get him, folks. Come on, skip right up and get him. And he bonds today. Bonds of freedom, that's what I'm selling. And he bonds today. Scrape up the most you can. Here comes the freedom man, asking you to buy your share of freedom today. The initial goal was $1 billion per month, approximately 10% of the national economy. Comic books joined the war bond propaganda parade. Covers encouraging the purchase of war bonds and stamps fall into two broad categories, hard sell and results based. Hard sell comic book covers blatantly exhort readers to buy bonds, using their star characters as celebrity spokespersons. Results-based covers both concretely and symbolically depict the use to which the money raised by war bonds will be put. In July 1943, the covers of numerous Fawcett publications were nearly identical. The leading character on each comic instructed readers to purchase a $1 war saving stamp. This is a simple and effective design with nothing other than the essentials. The superhero acting as a spokesperson, the image of the war stamp, and the message, buy one of these war stamps today. The choice of the one dollar stamp was deliberate given the presumed youthful readership of the comics. More expensive than the 25 cent war saving stamps many children bought regularly, yet much more affordable than the $18.75 needed to purchase a $25 bond, the $1 stamp would require some sacrifice on the part of a young buyer, but was still within their means. However, other publishers felt differently. The covers of Popular Comics 101 and Walt Disney Comics and Stories No. 46, both dated July 1944, and Target Comics No. 52, September-October 1944, urged readers to buy one of these bonds today, accompanied by the image of a $100 bond, which would require a cash outlay of $75, 
beyond the reach of most adolescent comic book readers. Other hard sell comic book covers added patriotic motifs to their message. Batman number 17 features Batman and Robin and an American bald eagle. Catman number 17 has a flag design. Fawcett's Funny Animals number 3 and Animal Comics number 9 imitate the famous Spirit of 76 painting. Master Comics 62 and Walt Disney Comics and Stories number 20 add the patriotic figure of Uncle Sam. Speed Comics number 38 evokes the raising of the United States flag on Iwo Jima. Wiz number 31 uses not only superhero Captain Marvel to sell bonds, but also real-life military figure General Douglas MacArthur. Blue Bolt number 58 also features MacArthur, adding General Dwight Eisenhower, General Hap Arnold, and other high-ranking officers. Looney Tunes number 20 and other comics went the other direction, conveying their message in the simplest possible manner with a printed exhortation to buy bonds. In addition to the hard sell comics, other wartime covers encourage readers to buy bonds by showing for what purposes the money invested in bonds was used. The covers of Batman number 12, number 15, and number 30 illustrate the linkage between the bonds and the weapons used by the Allied Armed Forces. The indirect outcome of purchasing bonds is suggested by these images of bonds literally defeating the Axis. On the cover of action number 86, Hirohito is buried under war bonds, as Superman informs him that it's the American people not a fictional superhero, who are contributing to his defeat. Catman number 19 depicts the Axis trio of Hitler, Hirohito, and Mussolini receiving bond-reinforced corporal punishment, a motif repeated on the covers of Target Comics number 32 and Target Comics number 61. Four Favorites number 11 anthropomorphizes a war bond who promptly slugs Hitler, Mussolini, and Hirohito. In addition to buying war bonds and stamps, the home front activity most accessible to youthful comic book readers was participation in scrap or salvage drives. A forerunner of today's recycling, wartime scrap drives were not intended to help the environment but rather to reduce waste and provide raw material for the war effort directly or indirectly. The primary materials collected were scrap metal and waste paper, although waste fats and other substances were also salvaged and reused. These campaigns were not limited to the Allied nations as this German propaganda poster illustrates. Since scrap drives weren't exactly visually exciting, relatively few wartime comic books featured this home front topic on their covers. There were some exceptions. rationing affected virtually all Americans during wartime. In addition to propaganda urging citizens to obey the rules and conserve scarce materials whenever possible, popular media addressed rationing in two ways, with humor and by dramatizing such violations of government restrictions as the black market, counterfeiting ration coupons, and so on. Gasoline was rationed not because it was in short supply, but to prevent unnecessary driving which would wear out automobile tires, since rubber was scarce. The covers of these comics make humorous references to gasoline and tire rationing. The cover of Funny Stuff number 4 makes the oft-used joke about getting a horse, 
since unlike automobiles, they don't use gasoline or rubber tires. The yellow label marked A on the horse is a basic gas ration sticker and the lowest allotment possible. Big Shot 35 repeats the joke, although the poor horse is being frightened into galloping at a faster speed by being shown the scary disguise worn by superhero The Face. Notice that the passengers are depicted as being part of a USO show for servicemen, thus getting in two wartime references for the price of one. Big Shot number 58 also works in a dual reference. Character Mr. Knuckles is riding a bicycle rather than a horse because he doesn't have enough red points. Red points were ration coupons used to purchase red meat. On the cover of Feature Comics number 65, Lollapalooza's ne'er-do-well brother Vince flaunts rationing and hijacks fuel oil at gunpoint, hardly a patriotic act. On a slightly less felonious note, Feature Comics number 73 depicts Lollapalooza and brother Vince returning to the USA from Argentina with a live cow, since Vince has lost their meat ration coupons. Scarce commodities were available via the illegal black market, and there were also cases of ration coupons being counterfeited. As always, this topic was occasionally used for humorous purposes, although since the protagonists of these comic book covers were cute anthropomorphized pigs, suggesting they're going to be butchered and eaten seems a little macabre. Wartime propaganda, including comic book covers, did its best to discourage readers from patronizing the black market by linking it with organized crime and or the Axis enemy. In part two of this episode, we shall discuss the home front topics of Victory Gardens, Civil Defense, the Red Cross, war production, and the threat of spies and saboteurs. And don't forget to watch the first five episodes of Deconstructing Propaganda.